this section I'm going to dedicate more examples so you can get to see the poses in different situations so you aren't questioning how you do a certain pose when you're doing your gestures for yourself okay so do your best to follow along and recognize the the, the tools that we have gone over in the previous sections I started with a ground plane and the ground plane just pretty much grounds my character where I see the reference okay then I start with the head as usual into the neck, following into the spine. Through the thoracic area, I recreate repeating curves, and I come through and hit a dominant curve, which I drew right here. I create a wrapping line around to denote where the skirt will be, and to make the skirt, I draw a forceful shape, which is a modified rectangle. Now the modified rectangle could be longer, it could be shorter, because this is the gesture I can modify this, how long or how short the skirt I want to be. I am not thinking too much on proportion, because within the gesture you want to just get the general figure down before you think about the proportions, because the proportions can be fixed later on. So. I finish this off to the limbs. I am thinking also about angles. So where I see the, the foot here and the foot on the other side and where the prop is, it's all coming through like on one angle here. So that's how I determine where the legs are. Now, to get the arm here, I think of the force pushing up. I see the, the shoulder pushing up through here and you see I'm coming through I get the arm here a push that I see in the hand and I create a horizontal bending line to get to the next side of where the other arm is and I create arrow you see here I create an arrow to get to where the other hand is. And to finish this off I put straight and I curve through right here. Okay. So that's almost finished with the gesture now. What I usually do when I come over here is that I try to mimic the musculature that I see here, it's not exactly anatomy, but it's for stylistic purposes to make my gestures you know, a little bit more human looking. So I come through with a straight here, and I come through with a curve, a straight here, and lead an arrow coming through to the curve here. So if you could see this in red, a straight here, a curve here, a curve into here and then sort of a straight here and a curve here. So I do the same on the other side straight curve curve into here straight semi pseudo straight straight here and straight here. The skirt I think of it in 3D so I put dotted lines around it to remind myself that this is a 3D shape and it should be uh, it should be have solidity to it, volume. And as I get up back to where the bag is, we must draw the bag because this also is part of the gesture. What to note here is that the bag is not straight. We should never draw the bag with straight lines, as we see on the model what we should do is we should draw the bag and what it's doing. So I see the bag being pushed up, creating a force being pushed up, and this mimics that she is sort of taking her bag and she's pushing it over her shoulder, gripping it on as she holds onto her prop. So I 
draw the same action that I see, that I see that the bag is emitting, I give pushing forces here and here. And same with the bottom of the bag. I do not draw the bottom of the bag straight as we see on the model. I give a push to the bottom of the bag. So I create a pushing force that creates on the bottom of the bag that I see. Put the strap here. And that now I come over here. I just do a quick indication of hair. Hair isn't necessary when we're drawing a gesture, but I like to give my gestures a bit of character. So I quickly put in a broad shape of what the hair would be. And to get the prop, I make sure I check my angle and I draw a quick gesture of the prop. I don't draw it straight. I give a bit of curve to what I see the prop is doing. You can draw multiple lines. You're not. You don't have to draw it in one stroke. And that sort of gives a bit of you know gestural feel to it. You're not trying to tighten up because when you're doing this on a timer, you're not really trying to tighten up. And that will finish it. So you can see a big difference between this gesture or this this the reference and the gesture here. This one is just stationary, and this one has a bit more push, put more movement to it. So, general rule when you're doing your gestures is to remember it is to never copy the model you are analyzing. You are seeing what you see from life, you're taking it, and you're giving it more push, you're giving it more action. Now I could do something more with the skirt. I could come in and I could, you know, I could push this even more if I wanted to. I could give it a blow. I could draw around it. I could do whatever I want with this. I could change the height of the head. I could change the angle of the head. But it's up to me. Okay, so. We'll do more examples so you can get to see different poses and different scenarios.